Hi, everyone. I'm very pleased to be here today. And I'm Dunya Shayeluj, if you want to pronounce it correctly, but that's fine. You will find me on social media, Dunya CLD. And I'm a software engineer at Isovalent by Cisco, contributing to Cilium Project, a CNI for Kubernetes. I'm also the co author of a book, uh, Learn Go with Pocket Size Projects, with two of my friends and co authors, Alienor Latour and Pascal Bertrand. And today we're going to talk about how we can build a glamorous, fun, pop, colorful habits tracker using Charm CLI. We'll talk about what is my ideal habit tracker, um, what is Charm exactly, and we'll do some we'll do some demos along the way, and hopefully it's going to work. And at the end we will wrap up what is uh, Charm and a little cheat sheet of what we learn. So why I wanted to build my uh, ideal habit tracker. If you play an instrument, you might know. Two years ago, I started playing the clarinet, and it requires some uh, consistency if you want to play a new instrument. So I just wanted to follow up like how much I was playing during the week and say to my teacher, yeah, I played five times and I did all the games and everything. So what is a habit? Just to define it quickly, it's... Um, there is a name, a description, uh, a target. This is the number of times I want to achieve it during the week. And a ticks count. I want to tick each time I'm actually achieving my habit of playing the clarinet here. In parallel, uh, in the book, we wrote a chapter which was a habit tracker, but it was a backend, a gRPC backend, and it was not fun to use. What I wanted is to have a beautiful terminal UI not a mobile app because I have so many and don't want to be on my phone much more, but I'm on my computer most of the time because I'm working, of course, like everyone. So I just wanted to have something pop and colorful in my terminal. Here you can see a screenshot of what I want and what we're going to build today. So I have my list of habits. Uh, I have the details of the number of times I'm achieving it during the week and the progress bar. And I have a form if I want to add more habits and do more stuff. We can see at the bottom there is just the helper. Um, so we, want, we know what, how to use it. So a terminal UI has some constraints. Um, we want to display strings only. Um, we cannot print logs as we want. We will need to put them in a file. And we need to handle errors properly. I will not go into details of everything here, but just, you know, what are the constraints? And of course, because I'm a golfer, I didn't want to become a front-end developer to build just a UI. So we are going to use Go, of course. So here is Charm. Charm is making the command line glamorous, powerful, fun, and modern. And they are building open source libraries like Glamour, the first one, which is a style sheet more than render. Then there is Bubbles that come in, which is components for Bubble Tea apps. And Bubble Tea is the main library that we're going to use today and see, which is a terminal UI framework. Finally, we will see just quickly LibGloss, which is the terminal style toolkit where you can make it actually colorful. They built also really fun application just for the culture. There is Glow that under Markdown on the CLI, Subserve to self-host your Git server for CLA. And the funniest one, I think, is VHS. So you can write your terminal gives us code, and it works really well. There are many more, but you can check out on their website, of course. So let's go back to Bubble T and how we can actually define it. So it's based on the Elm architecture. Elm is just a functional language, uh, which is not common for Go, uh, but it's based on three core concepts. We have the model, which is the state of your application, the view method to render your model in your terminal as a string, and the update one. It's just the way to update your state based on messages you're going to receive, and messages can be the resize of a window, for example, or uh, the user typing on the keyboard. On a more broader perspective on, in the code, we will have a main where we are initial, initializing the model with a new program and run it. And bubble T is based on the three methods that we just saw. We have the model, we init it, and then we will view render in our terminal. 
then we will receive a new message in the update method here and receive the new model and loop here to render the new model that we just got. So basically we will use what we got in Bubble T. There are many things available, which is really fun. So you can just take them on the shelves. We have the spinner, the text input, text area, table, robots, and many more. These are models that are already implemented and you can just take them from the shelves and use them in your code. So let's go back to our habits tracker. What we want to do, we have our main model and we will talk about nested model and use what Bubble Tea offers. We'll use a list for the habits model. You can see the screenshot probably. No, it's a little small, but okay, we'll see that later. We have the progress bar model, uh, which is just to display again, the animated progress bar. You can do it static, but of course it's more fun to have something animated. And we have a creation form model to just create a new habit each time we want it. And it will use the text input from the, from the user keyboard. We have the backend API, which I talk is available in the book. So I'm just reusing this code. It's in gRPC. There is a talk about uh, gRPC this afternoon from Sadie Freeman, if you're curious about it and you don't know about gRPC. And I will store all my data in the DB habits. Again, we define a habit with some information. We have a data model. Uh, I'm implementing an item interface, which is available again in Bubble T to display the title and the description. And in my main model, I will add the list of habits. I want to initialize my model, of course, by using list.new and all the default setup at the beginning and customize with a title and some items hard-coded here for the sake of the demo, of, the demo, of course. Um, we have the model interface. Uh, again, we have the init methods. We are not launching anything at the beginning. And we have the view and here we are using the m.habits.u, which is the method that is available in Bubble T. So it's going to delegate all the work to what is implemented in the library. So very easy to use. The update method, I think, is the most interesting because all the logic is here. So you're going to customize this one. And if you have a resize of the window, a new type of message coming, we get, we're going to update and resize the window and render again to do maybe pagination because your window is smaller, for example. Um, if you have a new message uh, on your uh, keyboard, um, for example, quit, which is here, keymap.quit, it's just Q. Uh, I want to send a comment of t.quit exceeding, of course, politely my program. And uh, I want again to delegate the update to Bubble T. This is the time where we are praying for the demo god. <laughs> so I have a make, uh, but it's just running the code that I just showed you. So here I'm launching the code and I have my terminal UI. Yeah, you can see it. Okay, we have our list of habits uh, to the two items uh, that I hard coded to read a book. And you can see in pink, uh, the current selected item. And at the bottom, uh, we have the helper, which is the default one, again, from Mobile T. So that's cool. We're happy. We have our list of items. But I want to see the details with the number of tick count and the target that I want to achieve. So to do so, we will update the view method. And uh, we will uh, select our current item by using a selected item method. And um, because again, we are manipulating string, I will just create a new string with the, the information that I want to display. So the current text count and the current target. And I want to put some lip gloss by adding, by calling join horizontal, which is a method that is just uh, putting all the, the, sorry, all the strings together and displaying them um, nicely. So here we, ha we will have on one side the habits view, which is the list of habits and the details of each current item. So let's see again what it looks like, create the other example. And here we go. We have read a book. Uh, I, achieved it, I achieved it three times out of five this week and go for a walk, zero out of two, which is not true because since I'm in Chicago, I walked a lot. 
<laughs> so let's actually take a habit. So to update this habit. To do so, I will create a custom comment. Um, a comment is just a function that is taking a new message and returning a type of comment that will send again a message. So I will select again my current item and call my backend uh, to a PC, tick habit with my ID. I will get a new habit. And at the end, I just want to um, update my model and my list of habits. Again, I'm delegating the update to bubble tea. Very easy to do. And um, because I want to enter this mode, um, I need to catch a new type of key map. So it's going to be a T for keymap.tick, and I will call this increment ticks method to do so. Again, let's see what it looks like. So if I run the tick example, so here we have go for walk. Let's tick. Okay, it's working. I'm typing T at the moment. Achieve this week. We're happy. We have what we wanted. Our my list of habits are uh, tracking the progress, but I want it to uh, have something more fun, as I say. And I'm going to introduce here the progress model, progress bar model. So I will just use the progress model that is available on the shelf in Bubble Tea and add it to my main model. Again, I will create a new type of comment. And uh, what I'm going to do and what is important here is just that I'm using set percent, which is a function that make the percentage of the bar progress to the value that you want. And here it's my ticks count on my target value. Very, very easy, isn't it? So let's see what it looks like again. And you can see the progress bar in action. So here 40%, 60%, and of course here 100%. And we're happy to see how fun it is to just have our progress bar. OK, now that we have all these habits, I want to add new habits, of course. So basically, what I will do is just have a form where I'm putting a name, a description, and a target, all the information that I got in my habit. And um, I will add a new type of model, again, from Mobile T, which is text input model, in my main one. I will add a um, new concept in my program because I don't want my program to behave the same way if I'm navigating in my list of habits or if I'm creating a new habit. So depending on that, I will change my state and adding the form and the state to my main model. Then I create again a new comment. You're now familiar with that. And I just retrieve the three type of inputs that the user is passing. Here, what I'm taking is the name, the description again, and targets. I'm calling my backend API and, sorry, and inserting uh, the item in my model so it's updated. I want to catch the create key input, which is C here. And uh, what I will do is just call the form.update, which is, again, the method from the progress uh, when I'm in creating mode. OK. The final demo. So what I got here, we have what we've seen already. I didn't say it before, but here you can see that I updated the helper here uh, by uh, putting create and tick. So I will just type C and we have our form. So give a talk to Kofukon. Oh, I have a bug. <laughs> so we didn't pray enough. OK, so what is happening here is that I'm listening to signals from the other mode. So that's why I told that I really need to behave differently. So that's OK. I will fix that after. So give a talk to go for Khan. <laughs> and I want to, de to do it once. And let's enter. Give a talk to go for Khan. And I want to activate because I'm done. So I'm going to tick it. 
And I'm done with my habit of this week, which is not a habit that I should take every week, definitely. Okay, let's wrap up. So what we've learned today was an easy example that uh, with Trump CLI, you can build a, a model by combi combining what is available in Bubble T with least table text form directly. You need to implement a model interface with the init updating view method. You can put a lot of lipstick if you want to and a lot of different colors. I didn't show here, but you can do many, many things um, using lip gloss library. And to create new comments and just update and upgrade your software, you can create new comments by passing a new type of message and returning a comment. And I hope you're going to apply it to your everyday boring CLI and have a lot of fun with Charm. If you're curious about Charm, you can go to their website. Again, there is a lot, a lot of examples. And I wanted to do a special shout out to Bash Bunny, who is the developer advocate at Charm. She is building a lot of great content that I used to do this talk today. Um, thank you a lot. If you want to uh, check the book or the slides, they are available with a bug, as you can see. And uh, my slides also on speaker deck. And you can see here uh, the GIF recorded with the VHS of my demo. And here my demo is working, as you can see. <laughs> okay, thank you a lot.